Hello everybody, it's Paul from Reinders, and uh, we've been getting a lot of questions lately about the difference between the 6-port and the 4-port Twinkly Pro controllers. 6-port, brand new this year, so we figured we'd give you guys a quick little run-through so you can see the differences yourself. So let's unbox this thing and take a look. So when you first open it up, you're going to see a nice little uh, brochure here, a little instruction book. It's got some good diagrams about how to lay out your controllers and networking and all that good stuff. Um, Toss that aside. This is the controller. A few major differences from last year, or the four port. Um, the most obvious difference is the cord between the power supply and the controller does not have a connector on it. On the old four ports, remember we had to deal with these little four pin connectors in here and you had to get it, the thing in there and tighten it and all that stuff. Um, they did away with that. The cords are completely attached to the housing itself, which is kind of cool. Um, the other major difference is the way that the networking is handled. Um, again, on the old four port, remember we had this other cover with the uh, network port in there. And we typically had to use this little adapter piece to cut your Cat5 cable, take the end off, put it through the tiny little hole, put your waterproof connector on, plug it in, and then crank this down around the side of this hole and make it watertight. And it was kind of a pain in the butt because you had to make all the custom cables. So for this season, they gave us this fun little thing. Um, you crack this open, and in the middle here, is a little female to female RJ45 connector. So the way this works, you take your Cat5 cable that comes off of your controller, take the uh, back off of this nut, put it over the uh, Cat5 cable, pop the little blue rubber piece out of there, put it around the collar of your, your Cat5 cable, Slide your Cat5 cable through this piece. Plug it into the, uh, the center piece. You can tighten that down and then you can wiggle the blue silicone disc back in there so that it sits nicely back in its little, little cradle and you crank this end down. So what that's going to do is it's going to squeeze that silicone right around the cable and it's nice and tight and waterproof. So you do the same thing to the other side if you got to run longer distances. So it makes it very nice and easy to use standard you know, pre-made Cat5 cables. So that's a, a real welcome addition to this six port version. Um, power supply is designed to power all six ports as long as you're using RGB or AWW. Um, the RGBW string sets, you can only use five of these outputs, but still a pretty good deal. Um, they changed the whole entire look of the enclosure. Remember we had the big old, uh, big old black four port. Um, size wise, you know, they're pretty close to the same. The new six ports just a little bit little bit larger but you know not by much um, why it's white we don't know but um, you know if you don't like the white uh, Krylon fusion spray paint will uh, make that <laughs> any color you want a um, couple of other new features this year they added a button to the top um, the button cycles through your effects or it can be used as a reset button very similar to what the Wi-Fi controllers do um, or it will be used to enter the controller into a PoE mode used to power the new micro Wi-Fi. So that's pretty much a quick rundown um, of the, uh, the new features of the six port controller. Uh, whoops, I forgot, you got the LEDs here too. Um, that'll give you a status indication as to what it's doing, if it's connected, um, that kind of thing. Very similar to what the, uh, the Wi-Fi controller does. So that's pretty much our rundown of the six port controller. If you have any questions, you know where to find me at Rinders.